In order to really see the effect of centering the polynomials when we have a model with interactions, let's take an example and jump and fit the model with and without centered polynomials, and then we'll actually look at the model coefficients and see what changed. So I'm using a data set with some hypothetical data for 100 students who took an exam. We also have measured their study hours on that exam and some measure of previous knowledge on a 0 to 100 point scale. So maybe this is a previous test they took on the same topic. So let's use fit model and we're going to fit two models, one where we're actually centering polynomials and one where we're not. So let's set up the first model, score an exam predicted by the full factorial of these two variables. So we have that interaction term. Now I'm going to set emphasis to be minimal report and I'm click keep dialog open so I can run this first model. But then I'm going to go back to fit model and turn off center polynomials and run the second model. All right, so now that we have our two models set up, let's look at what changed and what stayed the same. Well, all of our summary of fit data is the same. Our overall analysis of variance is the same. Our lack of fit is the same. Let's actually hide these sections since nothing is happening there that we need to look at. Next, let's look at our parameter estimates table. Well, our intercept has changed. The coefficient for study hours has changed, so different in these two models, and for previous knowledge, but our interaction term is staying the same. All right, so let's step through the model on the left, the one where we have centered polynomials. And what I said in my original response was that the coefficients here, and we always have partial regression coefficients and multiple regression, but these coefficients read off like this. What is the effect of study hours holding constant the other variable in the model at its mean? So what is the effect of one more hour of studying when people have the average amount of previous knowledge? And for previous knowledge, we can read it off the same way. What is the effect of previous knowledge on the outcome when individuals are held constant at the average amount of study hours? Finally, our interaction term, and we have the centering here pretty obviously, so it's previous knowledge minus its mean and study hours minus its mean and the product of those two. This estimate is to what degree does one unit increase in either of these variables attenuate the relationship with the other variable to y. So negative 0.04, this is an attenuating relationship. One more unit of previous knowledge takes away 0.04 from this coefficient in its relationship to y. Let's actually look at this because this is made a lot more clear using the profiler. So the profiler lets us interactively profile this model. So what this interaction coefficient is really saying is, if I move up on study hours, the slope between y and previous knowledge, notice it got flatter. We're taking away a little bit from the slope with every unit increase in study hours. And if I go below average here on study hours, notice that slope gets larger. And so really, if we're at the mean for study hours, so just about seven there, the average slope here, the average across the entire range of study hours, really when I'm at the mean of study hours, this average slope is that estimate, 0.27. And we could do the same thing for previous knowledge. If you look at study hours and I increase, notice it flattens that relationship. Or if I go below the mean on previous knowledge, it increases the relationship. This is actually, uh, of course, I made these data, so it's made to have an interpretable effect. But if you know a lot, then every additional hour of studying gets you less return than if you know very little. And in the same way that if you study a lot, the effect of previous knowledge, every unit increase there, gives you less gain than if you studied very little, then the effect of previous knowledge should be most. All right, so let's set these back to their averages. So 74.51, and we had 6.98. Now, I want to comment first and say that it might seem strange that we can get away with just one coefficient to represent the interaction between two variables, so the effect of one on the other and the other on the first. But really, this is a coefficient that represents the curvature of the regression plane. And that may seem like an abstract concept, but we can actually make it very tangible. I'll go back to factor profiling and turn on the surface profiler. So this will show us the response plane. And actually, I'll turn on the points to make it even more clear. So that one parameter is representing the curvature of this plane. So as we increase in one, how much does this slope off? So one parameter is all that's needed to represent the interaction between those two. And it can be interpreted in the same way. How much do you take away from the coefficient between y and this variable with every unit increase on the other variable? Let me go ahead and turn off that, that surface profiler. Let's see what's happening on the right-hand side. So on the right-hand side, we had different coefficients. We had the same interaction estimate. Now that is true no matter whether we center variables or not. That is the degree to which one hour more of studying attenuates the relationship between y and previous knowledge. So that stays the same. But these other terms are different. So let me bring up the profiler and we can actually see why. So right away, you may notice something. These look identical. We actually have dialed in the mean for each of these variables in both of our profilers. 
So over here, these slopes represent the partial regression coefficients in this model. But over here, the slopes of these lines don't represent these partial regression coefficients because these represent the effect of study hours when previous knowledge is at zero. And this coefficient represents the effect of previous knowledge when study hours is at zero. So let's actually see that. Let me put study hours at zero. And notice that the slope, and I'll just drag up this axis here, this slope enlarged, of course, because when we study less, the effect of previous knowledge is more, which is why 0.55 is larger than 0.27. This coefficient here represents previous knowledge when study hours is at zero. Now, if I put previous knowledge to zero, that's going to represent the slope of this line. So study hours is 5.29 additional units for every hour of studying when previous knowledge is at zero. So that line is more sloped simply because when we're at no previous knowledge, well, studying counts more. So in our models, if we don't center the polynomials, these lower order terms take on a different meaning. It's the effect of one variable holding constant the other at zero, rather the effect of one variable holding constant the other at its mean. So I hope this helps in understanding those coefficients and certainly take advantage of the prediction profiler. It's a great way to understand the coefficients in these models.